Hello everyone, welcome to Lynx in Paris, again live for an update. I hope you can join us live and if not, of course, like most of you, you can watch it afterwards. But we're once again doing this live session to give you an update on the project, give some comments uh, about the ecosystem, but not too much. Um, and I hope you will enjoy what we have to share today. And, and there are some important stuff to, to share. Uh, it's completely unscripted. Um, it's uh, it's important for us to, to, to share the news. Uh, I don't even know in what order I will share the stuff, but I will give you some reactions also to what Meta or Facebook uh, published today. And uh, yeah, hope you will enjoy the ride. So I think we can start with the updates about the project itself, about links R1. Uh, there are very good news on that front. We we obviously had delays for the deliveries and the manufacturing, but so far, um, uh, oh, someone said, oh, you have you have the sound, okay? Because in the, all right. Let me know if you don't if you if the audio is cutting, uh, but. Uh, so what I what I was saying is that the the manufacturing is um, running now. We had some issues with the logistics uh, because of the supply chain issues, uh, a lot related to uh, cameras and displays. Um, so to give you to give you a, a very precise example, uh, so this is a this is an unpixelated view of what is a mixed reality headset, and on the headset you have. On our headset, you have many cameras, and two of them are for the pass-through, and we have others that are doing hand tracking and, and six stuff. So for the when we ordered the RGB cameras, the lead times, which is the time that the manufacturers have has to, I, I mean needs to deliver you the goods, uh, was 25 days, and those cameras below was 26 weeks. So you can see that depending on the kind of sensor you use or uh, the materials that are used to, to produce it, there were some uh, very, very high drama going on uh, behind the scenes. So we had to manage, uh, we had to change sensors for a pair of cameras. We, uh, not only us, but also our partners, including Qualcomm and, and Ultralib for some stuff were uh, helping us a lot. So right now, I don't think we'll have some trouble with the, with the deliveries of the materials we need to manufacture the headsets. Um, so we have a first run of, uh, of for the production for the Kickstarter. Uh, and we have another uh, batch also this summer for the um, for the first few thousands uh, headsets, 3000 headsets coming uh, out also of the factory. Um, and, and, and from there, we will have a sustainable uh, supply chain. But that was I mean, I, I can't share everything with you, of course, be, because of the NDA, we have the suppliers and everyone, blah, 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 but it was, it, it still is a lot of drama. It still is a lot of pressure on the team. But the good news is that as Lynx is growing, um, uh, first of all, we are doubling the, the office space we have here. And today is the first day that we hired someone uh, not in France. Uh, we hired someone that is opening our office in Taiwan. Uh, so that, that person uh, is uh, very welcome in the company. Uh, he speaks French, English, and Chinese, which is a blessing, and uh, is going to help us, you know, uh, work with the suppliers uh, there. So it's important that, you know, now we have someone there uh, full-time. We open a, a, an office there, so we will have a full presence on the manufacturing side, so this is this is really, you know, serious for us. Uh, we are we are putting a lot of money on the line for buying components, making sure that they are delivered, having someone there for the logistics and, and other stuff. So it's exciting also for me to see the the company growing um, because we continue to hire here. Uh, we we are running out of office space and we have uh, colleagues now in other uh, continents. So it's it's really really exciting. It's a it's a great adventure to live. Um, so yeah, uh, we're the, the team and I. We're we're sorry for the delays. I think it's our biggest frustration. We 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 wanted to deliver that headset maybe in January if we could, uh, but that's the that's the you know part of the uh, supply chain drama and everything going on in the world that we're facing. So we the, the thing you have to remember is that we cannot go faster than what we're doing. Really, it's, uh, we we. 
we are doing our best. Uh, so again, thank you for the support. Uh, the, also, the good news, because we have a clear view of when we will be able to deliver the first headsets. For the Kickstarter, we're seeing today the surveys. So the surveys will ask you if you participate in Kickstarter, your address and delivery information, so we can make sure that uh, the goods will be delivered uh, to the right person, uh, to the right backers. Uh, so expect that uh, tonight, I mean, or today, depending on your time zone. Uh, right after this call, we're sending that uh, to the backers. Uh, and also, if by any chance you know some of the people that are placing, that want to place big orders for links either in 2022 or 2023, please tell us in advance. I mean, you know, if it's above 1,000 headsets for a company or something else, uh, please let us know because we're doing the forecast for uh, 2023 as well. And we, uh, you know, the bigger numbers, the, the best it is for us for the, the supply chain here. But um, yeah, exciting. So that's, uh, that, that's, that's it for the, the manufacturing. Then there's the, <coughs> the software. So there are many exciting things on the software as well. Um, we are very close to uh, find something official with SideQuest. We, I, we can't wait to to work on the store, uh, to, to finish the store together. Uh, there is some very interesting things going on uh, with them. So, uh, you know, the, the, we, we are working on the, how we're going to distribute the content and having the ecosystem running on, on links with them. They have a lot of experience. They have a lot of developers working with them. So we are very happy. It's one of the best partnership I'm looking forward to. Then there is the, the web browser, uh, as I told you in the last live, uh, that is also going to work pretty soon. Uh, and all that will rely on the OpenXR runtime. So everything we're building is relying on OpenXR. We, we couldn't uh, put out the SDK yet, uh, and I'm, I'm pushing for that every, every week, uh, because uh, we are still facing delays with uh, Qualcomm related on the, on the runtime and on some like low level stuff that is uh, happening on the on the, on the SDK and the compositing but we are we we're, we're getting there i be, i believe they are also uh giving the best effort but my goal is to uh deliver to the developers the first headsets and SDK um in in like one or two months and uh so we can start seeing some very very cool applications uh running on that so uh, thank you again for this interest. I have many emails from developers every day for the SDK or headsets. We are working uh, on that. So uh, you just have to let us work a few more weeks. But now we are counting in weeks and not in months. So that's, yeah, that's, that's really, really huge. I'm very excited uh, for what's going to happen this summer. I hope you're not taking too much vacations because it's going to be really interesting. Um, so then I think we can... Uh, we can talk about uh, something else. Uh, I told you that I'm, you know, if Facebook was going to, to release some stuff about Camrya, then I would react on that. And two hours or three hours ago, they released a video of, I don't know what that was, but uh, uh, a teasing, I guess, of uh, um, the next uh, iHand headsets they are putting on the market. So uh, we're going to watch that together uh, and, and um, that was really interesting. I think uh, it's, um, yeah, I'm not going to, to tell you. I just watched that video once, so uh, uh, that will be the second time I'm watching this video with you, okay? So let's, let's watch that together. Uh, okay. So I downloaded the, like, the HD video from Twitter. I'm cutting the sound because uh, the voice is killing me, but we we are going to watch that. I saw some interesting stuff in this video. Uh, it's being analyzed on Twitter, on internet already, uh, frame by frame. I'm sure, I'm sure Carl Kudak will say something about that. Uh, you can uh, watch uh, uh, Bradley Lynch uh, Twitter or channel. I'm sure he's already discussing that, and that's great. We are just going to watch that uh, together. Um, so first, they're pixelating the, the, the device. That's interesting. I think they, that's because uh, it's probably a DVT device that is not like the final, that, that there is some uh, rough material or, uh, you know, not, not everything right with the form factor, probably. 
then we're seeing some animals on the ground. I don't know where they got this idea, right? Then we're seeing some views of the pass-through. Okay. All right. So cool thing is that all the leaks were right. I'm going, yeah. Okay. So for, for me, what's really interesting in this video are the last few uh, scenes, ex, 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 you know, this one in particular. So let's rewind a bit. So here, if we focus here, that was some, uh, that, I think that's from a, a promo video they showed at the last event at the end of November. And if we look at the, the hand in front of the, of the display, you can see that the hand segmentation is absolutely perfect. Uh, so that was definitely a simulated view uh, that, that was done on After Effects or I don't know what, but that's clearly not a view of what you get from the headset. Because if we look uh, after, so this, this, this scene also is interesting is that there, um, the, the woman here is, is, is not opaque, which is something they could have done with pass-through. So I don't understand why they insisted on showing something that was uh, translucent and, and, you know, like, like semi-transparent, like you, you are used to see that on optical see-through devices. And with, with mixed reality device, you could have made this woman fully opaque and more um, immersive in your real environment. So I don't understand why they took this artistic direction in this shot, but that's interesting. Maybe to emphasize the fact that it's virtual, uh, I don't know. But in that shot, yeah, okay, let's pause. Uh, if, you, if you focus on the, on the virtual hand mask and the real hand uh, behind, you can see like both the, you know, both the difference in latency and alignment. Yeah, so, and, and that is, that is a very telling of where they're at in their mixed reality integration. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying that mixed reality was an afterthought for them, but like having the, the color cameras was an afterthought. But if we look at the history of this project, um, you can, we, can, we can quote Mark Zuckerberg at the end of uh, January 2021, last year, uh, in an article from The Information, uh, from a podcast, an uh, interview podcast he made with Matthew Olson, from the information, Mark Zuckerberg said um, something like, "Users, like consumers, won't be won't like to see the real world through pass through cameras." So this is why he is betting a lot on uh, augmented reality with uh, you know like smart glass uh, type of displays. Uh, and then I know that in April, like four months after that, uh, he backpedaled internally and told his team that uh, pass through was the way to go. So it's been a year now that it's on their roadmap and on the on the on you know on the productization uh, on on one of their headsets. Um, so they they had a year to work on that, and you can see that the 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 hand tracking uh, that is on the you know uh, from the Quest, the hand tracking is really impressive in VR. It's great, especially what they they released uh, lately, um, but. The hard thing with mixed reality is to make sure that you have the right latency with your real hands as well, because otherwise you would you would see something like like, like that, you know, like this this difference between the virtual and real hand in both latency and, and alignment, and and that would uh, definitely be a, an obstacle in user interface. Uh, so I I'm actually su surprised. I'm positively surprised because uh, we have something superior. Uh, I'm thinking about our Ultralip system. Uh, I can show you a video comparing the two. Um, yeah, so that 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 is in VR. That is the 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 hand tracking we have on links. And and you know the alignment and the latency on our hands are exactly what you would want for a good mixed reality experience. So I'm I'm very surprised from. Uh, 
Mark Zuckerberg to, to share this kind of work that early, uh, especially after the fact that, uh, oh yeah, there is another video I wanted to, to show you. You know about their, their small uh, animal running around? Well, there is, my video is lagging, but uh, there is an, uh, a video on YouTube you can, you can watch uh, featuring a, a, a lynx, small animal. Um, so I know where they got this idea. The thing is, uh, this video is weird in, in many different ways. So there's a technical aspect. Uh, you could see also in the camera that they have the same kind of noise that we're facing uh, on the quality of the, of the pass-through. Um, and again, it's a, it's a compromise, you know, like all headsets on the market, including links are compromises. So we are just uh, tr trying to set the, the right metrics here, but it's, uh, it, it, you know, there, there are many issues still with, with headsets, but uh, the Cambria video is definitely weird for what we saw with the hand tracking and the latency we'll have at least on, the, on, on this system. Um, so I, I'm actually worried for them in a way. Um, we had a lot of uh, love internally at Lynx, but I'm pretty sure people at Pico, I mean, Binance or, or Apple are laughing even more. Uh, you know, uh, so, so yeah, it was really surprising because that guy is spending 3 billion a quarter and that's what he's putting online. So I'm, I'm, I'm worried for, for them. Because they had they had like a week of news articles saying that Meta is facing issues internally, with you know uh, they they freeze the the hiring process, uh, their revenue is shrinking in other businesses and and their the, the the growth of the company is kind of slowing or even diminishing, and and he's then putting this video online, uh, which was supposed maybe to blow people away, but it's it's kind of really underwhelming. It's a very underwhelming way to promote mixed reality, I think, especially from a company that uh, put three billion per quarter uh, on the table for that. I mean, I wish I had this money, right? And and I promise you guys, I won't put something like that online. But so that was a weird um, PR uh, exercise. I'm not sure what they're going to get from that. Uh, I can tell you what I got from that is that uh, I think we are going to be able to really compete with them on both the price and the features on Lynx. So if you're following the project from the beginning, you know that we've been working on, that, on, on all those things for a long time and, and, and that we had some uh, you know, setbacks and, and, and issues in raising our technical stuff because we are a damn small company. Uh, but I believe that with what I see and what I hear also from the other big companies is that we're do, we're still doing the right thing, and we we are clearly going to be the underdog and like the European champion for mixed reality for AR and VR. So I'm I would say I had a confidence boost after this video. The team here as well. Uh, I hope you have to if you're supporting Lynx, um, and you really have to uh, take into account that our Lynx version Lynx R1 it's it's not a dev kit. It's a, it's a real product it, with with quite high volume, but we're already working, as I told you before, on what you should expect next. And you know, if, if you're a developer, that it's, we are working on compatibility between what we're doing in the future for 2024, maybe even before that uh, for, for some users. Um, and and uh, we are, as we're growing, we are also thinking about making maybe two different products for uh, the future. Uh, on different price points uh, with the like, same kind of features but different uh, expectation in quality and, and some metrics. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with what we saw today. Um, I'm, uh, I'm not stressed anymore. Uh, you know, a lot of friends and, and people online are sending me stuff like, hey, you should watch out for Pico or for Facebook or that they, they're going to crush you. Uh, the cool thing is that I think there is room for everybody on the market. You know, there are maybe 20, 25 million headsets in the wild and we're 7 billion people on the planet. So the market is, is I think the market is huge and there is still a lot of room for a lot of people to, to do stuff here. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think we're losing a lot with, with 
Camry coming on the market in, in October. Um, but um, yeah, so that, that, that was my thoughts, you know, you're completely, completely live. Uh, I, I really wanted to react to that because I, I, I don't want those updates to turn into uh, let's react to what's happening in the AR and VR ecosystem. But this is the first time that we're really seeing pass through from a major company. So it's cool because it also means uh, validation. You know, it's a huge sign of validation that, you know, now we know that Facebook, Apple and, and Biden are working on those uh, on these things. And I know for a fact that all the new headsets coming on the market, like VR headsets, will have RGB pass through. So but a lot of people are hiding the color cameras, but don't know what to do with that yet. So uh, we uh, I think we still have a, a, an edge here. Uh, I can't wait for you to have the devices in hand. We uh, we are very excited. We're, uh, we have something very mature and stable now. Um, so it's going to be a really exciting uh, second half of 2022 for the AR and VR ecosystem. Uh, one thing I saw online is that someone was asking, uh, what do you prefer between a augmented reality and virtual reality? And someone answered like, next year it won't matter. Like you would have both of, of each. Uh, and I think the consumer, you know, like obviously people looking at those videos are early adopters or you might be a developer or someone that already owns headsets. Um, but I think uh, the consumer, the, the real hand users and the real masses out there uh, are going to be exposed to immersive technologies with mixed reality and, and the terms AR and VR maybe won't even be presented to, to, to those consumers. So I think we're going to see a, a very interesting shift. Um, it's going to be a hell of a ride. Uh, so thank you for everyone watching this video. Uh, I'm going to uh, try to answer some questions um, that you might have now. Sorry, I talk too much. Uh, so I'm scrolling back through the chats um, so someone is asking about the controllers so we're we're still working on controllers we're still working on making sure that the existing compatible steam vr controllers uh working with base station can work with links, uh, so you can play Steam VR games with your existing controllers, or can buy controllers from other vendors. Uh, and we are also uh, targeting for the end of the year to have the controllers uh, ourselves. So um, first, we are going to deliver the headset because that's what really matters, and then we are going to deliver in a second uh, time period uh, our controllers. I'm not saying it's not a priority, but we we really need to first. Uh, ship the headsets uh, as it is and make sure that it's working for most of our users and, and, and then we'll, you, you guys will see the, the controllers. Would you do a ping version? Uh, no, we won't, but you are, you're free to, you're free to, to tag it, to, to paint it in, in, in pink. Will there be a WebXR supported, uh, will, will there be WebXR supported in the default, in the default web browser? Yes. Uh, it's very important for us to... So we already have a 2D web browser. We already have something working. Uh, we have a developer internally that made a 2D uh, web browser that, that where you can scroll through website and that's that's fine. But what's really cool and really important for us is to have a WebXR compatible so you can launch uh, 3GS uh, scenes in the browser. Uh, and, and I think a lot of uh, content will be delivered through the web. Um, so the, you will have the store and you will have the, the WebXR content on links. So if my order number is below 1,500, when will, when will my approximately, when will I be delivered for the headset? Um, probably August uh, for, for that kind of uh, uh, batch number. Will base station be needed to use the controllers? So no. So our controllers will be uh, standalone like the headset. Can we have the CAD files for the headset so we can make 3D printable cases? So yes, you can have that. That's coming very, very soon. 
what developer who has been emailing you are most excited about? I think what developers are most excited about are the the hand tracking and the password. Uh, that's those are the two features that people are really looking uh, forward to. Uh, can we modify our orders once surveys come out? Yes, absolutely. So if you're if uh, between the time you will fill in the survey for the Kickstarter and the time we will start delivering, you would be able to change addresses or uh, contact information. Can you lie down comfortably without the bag getting in the way or being painful? So that's, an, that's uh, something you, you cannot do. I mean, you can do it, but it's not very comfortable because we have the battery there, so you cannot lie in your bed with the, with the headset. I mean, you can, but it's, it's not very comfortable or made for that. Uh, Yes, you're right. Uh, Wolvik is the web browser we are uh, working with, uh, and that will be uh, a first-class citizen on, on our headset. It's the, the back end is uh, Firefox reality. So the very cool thing is that uh, ad blocking will be enabled in this uh, in this browser. So we, uh, you know, like uBlock Origin and this kind of extension will work uh, in the headset. That's really cool. Uh, if you're not a backer, but you bought the device, but you want to present the device in a big hackathon of 200 people, would it be uh, would it be possible to have it? Yes, I mean, um, yes, we, the, we, we're building a first batch of 4,000 devices. So yeah, it should be able to have that. Uh, are the demo of the OS features coming out? Yes, so we'll show some of the samples we've been working on uh, before the end of the month. How are you going to counter Meta's face tracking offering for links? That's a good question. There is no, we don't have face tracking in the headset today. We are working on that. We have something working, especially for eye tracking, uh, but we, at the moment, but it, it won't be on links. So that, that's something that uh, Meta's headsets will probably be much better than than hours there for some time. Um, but can I buy it after people that pre-order it receive it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, if you want, I mean, the sooner you order, the sooner you will be in the line to have your headsets uh, at home. So it's just a matter of when you're ordering, you know, and then we're, we're producing the headsets in batches. Since we're a small company, we cannot uh, put a lot of money uh, on the table to to build a hundred thousand headsets and just uh, have them in a in a warehouse. Um, so we we are we are you know working in batches. So it will depend on the orders we're seeing. Are there any VPS features on Snapdragon Spaces uh, or other third party plugin like Immersal? Yes, absolutely. And Snapdragon Spaces will be also running on the device. Do you have a solution for switching batteries uh, in your roadmap? So you, we don't have hot swapping as a feature per se, but uh, you should be able to service the battery yourself. What if I order a headset today? When can I expect to receive it approximately? I would say for, if you order today, uh, we're working for you to have it before September. Could the HTC facial tracker be used with links? I'm, I don't think so. I, I've never used that or, or played with it uh, software-wise, so I don't know. I'm, we, we don't have one here. So my, my answer, my, my default answer would be no. Uh, okay, so yeah, that's, that's, that's it for today. Uh, can we get a UI sneak peek? Yeah, that's 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 coming before the end of the month. Uh, we rework the UI framework uh, in the SDK and, and part of the launcher experience as well. What's the FOV? <laughs> the FOV is 90 degrees, so nine zero. Uh, vertical, horizontal, and diagonal, it's a circle. Will there be a facial interface to prevent light bleed in VR mode? Yes, for the 2000th time, yeah. It's it's actually when you buy the headset, it's in the box. Uh, all right, so that's it. Uh, that's it for today, and uh, I hope you enjoy. 
For some of you that are not watching live, um, feel free to ask some questions in the comments. There is also a Discord uh, and uh, we'll get in touch with you on Twitter or social media and you will hear about us probably in the news maybe next week uh, for uh, some stuff about the, the company, but I couldn't talk about it uh, today. But yeah, uh, continue to follow us. We're close to do very impressive things for the ecosystem. I'm very excited and uh, see you soon, guys. Bye.